Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Car Loop Data and Cobra Car Insurance. Hey everyone, good afternoon. I'm going to show you how Charge on Solar works here in Australia using a Tesla car, such as our Tesla Model Y, and also the Tesla Powerwall 2, which we also have, which is the home stationary battery, and of course the latest version of the Tesla app. So let's get into it. And I should let you know too that this setup works with any home charger. So we do have a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector on the other side of my garage, but I also have a Wallbox Pulsar Max. So I'm proving to you today that it does work with any uh, EV charger, whatever you may use to charge your Tesla. So there are some minimum requirements for this to work. So you do need a Tesla Model S, Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model X or Tesla Model Y running at software 2023.32 or higher. And you must have a power wall with solar on site running 23.12.10 or higher. And the Tesla app must be updated to 4.30.5 or higher as well. Unfortunately, pre-2020 Model S and Model X are not supported for this feature. And there's my Tesla Powerwall 2 stationary home battery, and it is running version 23.28.2 currently. And I'm sitting in our Tesla Model Y from 2023 build, and it's running software 2024.2.7 as you can see. And yes, confirming it is charging on solar currently, and I'll show you the uh, Tesla app in a second as well, but all the stats are here, charging four kilowatts, six out of 16 amps, it is a three phase setup. And you can control all this from the car or the app. Um, so let's start off with just how to set this up. So there are two sliders now. There's an orange slider or yellow slider denoting how much you want to charge the vehicle from any source at the maximum available rate. And that's what this yellow slider will help you do. And then this black slider will be the maximum charge for your vehicle when solar is available past that yellow point. So now, for example, if I need some charge for the car to get away in the next few hours, um, I'm going to slide this orange slider up to say, let's say 80% to en enough for me to get away. And you can see instantaneously, the car will start ramping up to the maximum available uh, energy or charge available. And we'll go up to 11 kilowatts, which is the maximum three phase to the Tesla Model 3 Model Y, getting 16 amps. So that happens instantaneously. So what will happen now in this scenario is that it'll charge at the full rate, 11 kilowatts, up to my uh, orange uh, button, which is now uh, clear. That's the solar button or solar slider to 80%. And then past 80%, it's going to use only solar energy when available. I should tell you too that the charging on solar will only start working when there is 1.2 kilowatts of excess solar. So they do make it quite simple uh, to get this going. And again, if I change my mind or if I am happy to uh, use solar past a certain point lower, uh, let's say, let's test it out, let's say 54%, okay, so we have one more percent to go on this full rate um, and then we'll clock over to solar, let's see what happens. And of course being Tesla, the software is fantastic, uh, the app is showing exactly the same thing, five minutes remaining to 54% uh, before it'll start charging on solar, so we'll try to catch this happening and clicking over in real time. And I should let you know too that the app, uh, you have to actually sign out and sign back in again if you want uh, charging on solar to work. So that took me a little while to work out. I was wondering why it wasn't working for me, but once I signed out and signed back in on the app, then everything was good to go. Okay, so it's clicked over to 54%. Let's see how quickly this happens. To reduce the rate down to the available solar, it's calculating. Thinking, thinking, still calculating. I reckon about 30 seconds has passed. Okay, so about a minute has passed now. It's still calculating. Okay, so I reckon about two minutes has passed now. And now it's finally charging on solar. There, so it's now charging at about four to five kilowatts. Hmm, that's really strange. Now it's running 32 amps uh, instead of 16 amps. Interesting. Um, all right, well, nonetheless, it's, uh, it's definitely charging on solar. Let's have a look at the, um, the Powerwall 2 stats. So there is my home Powerwall 2. There you go, 5.8 kilowatts of solar from the house. Uh, 0.2 going to the grid, that's within tolerance and acceptable just for calibration between my three phases. Um, and 5.6 kilowatts going to the home. So I've got my pool pump running and also 
uh, five kilowatts of that is going to the vehicle. So that is working absolutely beautifully. Um, the car is charging off the wall box, non-Tesla charger, and uh, it's charging completely off solar. And now there's nothing going back to the grid. So I'm very happy. It seems to be working pretty well. And another caveat too is to make sure you turn off any other external devices controlling um, your charging. So whether that be the wall box built in eco mode and also Charge HQ, which is another uh, third party app that I sometimes also use for charging off solar. Oh, and also there's a little tap here, which is charge on solar at this particular location. And that's all done when you first set up your app. So it'll give you a little tutorial on what to do and also to confirm which location you want to have charge on solar. Obviously it makes sense to have it at your place where you have your home charger or wall connector. Now the next test is to see what happens when you have a scheduled charge. So let's drop it down to 1400, which is uh, in a minute's time. And we'll see what happens to the charge rate, whether it uh, ramps back up to the full 11 kilowatts or whether it stays on solar. However, what's interesting is that if you slide the um, threshold up past um, you know, the amount of charge available at the time, like right now, say you know, the limit is now 75% from any source and then continue to 100% when solar is available. Um, so now it's switched from uh, basically nothing at that point, let me show you, nothing at down here, to when I slide it up, now it says charge from any source at 215. So we've got two more minutes. We'll see whether um, it charges at 215 from any source, i.e. up to 11 kilowatts, which is the maximum charge rate. So let's watch. Okay, so we're very close to 2.15, which is when the scheduled charging time is. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that was actually pretty quick. It's ramped up to the full rate, well, it will be very soon, 11 kilowatts, almost instantaneously. Amazing, right? So that's good to know, actually. Very good to know. Um, so I think I understand the algorithm now. So if you don't have any scheduled charge time, um, and you just plug in, then it will basically, if you have this um, yellow or white dot above the current state of charge, uh, with no scheduled start time, it'll be 11 kilowatts at the maximum charge rate up to that point, and then it'll go charge on solar. Um, unless you have a scheduled charge time set uh, at a later time, in which case then it will just charge on solar all the time until it reaches the charge time and then it will start to ramp up to 11 kilowatts. So once again, if you have no scheduled charge time, uh, it will charge to the full rate up to the yellow or white dot and then past that point it will be solar. If you have a scheduled charge time, it will actually do the opposite where it will charge on solar and then up to the scheduled charge time and then it will ramp up to the full charge. So I think that makes sense. It probably doesn't affect me too much because my schedule will normally be at midnight, um, which is uh, when my cheapest tariff is. If it's during the day, it will just uh, use charge on solar. So that is actually good to know. So now that I've dropped this down to midnight tonight, see that it's gone back to charge on solar, which is the uh, surplus uh, solar from my panels. So this should go up to, I think, four or five kilowatts, which it has. So it's pretty responsive, I must say. So there it is there, correlating with my uh, Tesla Powerwall app. There you go. Once it calibrates itself, it should match uh, how much is going to my car and the rest going to my home, with minimal going to my grid. Yeah, nice. I think it's working very well. Look, it's probably not as granular as, say, the Charge HQ app, but for a simple design and the main functions that you need, I think this is a pretty good feature from the Tesla ecosystem. Okay, so this will be my default setting for the vehicle at 45% state of charge. Below that, you can see the text which says charge on solar paused for power wall priority, which means that during the day, any excess solar will be used to fill the power wall first. And once the power wall reaches 100%, then the car can start charging. And then the actual setting itself, I've got it to charge to 100% with excess solar or at least 90% from any source at midnight, which means that uh, at midnight, the car will start charging at its full rate of 11 kilowatts up to 90%, and that's where it'll stop. And then if the car is still plugged in the next day, when the sun is up, 
then the final 10% will be charged from any excess solar once the Powerwall 2 has been fully charged. The maximum you can slide the solar setting to is 90%, which means that that's the most amount you can top up at the maximum rate within the scheduled charging time before solar charging kicks in, if it's available. And I guess now the Tesla has got this charge on solar feature, because I've got a Tesla Powerwall 2, I've essentially turned this Warbox Pulsar Max into a dumb charger. Even though it has got the uh, charge on solar feature as well, and all the scheduling and stuff, now that Tesla's doing it all, this is basically just a charge box. Um, because the downside with Warbox is that it's actually got quite a high threshold with three-phase charging to have full green, i.e. 4.3 kilowatts, whereas the Tesla Powerwall 2 will allow charging at 1.2 kilowatts, uh, even with a three-phase setup. So, of course, I'm going to go to Tesla because of the lower threshold. And the other thing about Warbox 2 is that it doesn't actually ramp up and down from three-phase to single-phase, uh, depending on how much surplus there is. So it will always use the three-phase configuration. So, for example, if there's less than 4.3 kilowatts uh, available as excess from solar, it'll start to use some energy from the grid, as opposed to flicking over to a single-phase setup. Um, so that's one drawback of um, the Warbox charger at the moment. But that's okay, it's still a very good you know, EVSE or uh, wall charger from home. And given I've got a Tesla Powerwall 2 and the Tesla Model Y, why not? I'm going to use the Tesla ecosystem, at least for the Model Y on this side of the garage. All right, everyone, that's a quick demo of uh, charging on solar uh, with a Tesla Powerwall 2 and a Tesla vehicle like our Tesla Model Y here from 2023. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope that made sense. Uh, any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy charging.